In this video we'll see how to carry out validation in practice. Before you can start with the actual validation you should conduct a validation plan. This means that you should carefully consider what validation parameters need to be estimated during validation, what analytical concentration are you going to carry out your validation, and also what matrices are available to you during validation. Also, you should consider what requirements are set to your method, what is the precision limit and how low LODs are required, for example. Also, it is wise to consider what materials are available to you during validation. For example, are there any reference materials available for your analyte in your desired matrices? If you have conducted the validation plan, you can start the actual validation. We suggest starting the validation with estimating the stability of your analyte, because the instability of analyte will influence also other validation parameters. If stability of your analyte is not acceptable, you should try to make modifications to your method. For example, adjust the pH of the solutions, or try to reduce the autosampler te temperature, or change the storing conditions of your samples. If the stability is acceptable, we can move on with the validation to selectivity. If selectivity is not acceptable, you could try changing the fragment that you monitor during your LCMS-MS run, or maybe add a fragment, or try to separate the interfering compounds with chromatography. Uh, when the selectivity is acceptable, you can move on to linearity. If linearity is not acceptable, you should try to modify the sensitivity of your method. This means that you should consider how to improve the, the ionization efficiency of your compounds. This means that you could adjust the source parameters, the gas temperatures, the gas flow rates, or the eluent composition. Maybe modify the pH of the eluent or the organic modifier content in the, in the eluent. Also, you could try concentrating your samples or diluting your samples, depending on how the obtained linear range and the desired concentration range are related. However, if you make modifications to your method, these modifications may also influence uh, parameter, parameters that have been, have been evaluated previously. So, if you make modifications, you should start the validation from the beginning. However, if linearity is acceptable, we can move on with the validation to precision. If for some reason the precision is not acceptable, first you should try to find out which part of your method causes this inacceptability. Does it come from the sample preparation or from the injection or is the problem in the ionization? If you have found out the root cause of poor precision, then you should make modifications to this specific part of your method. However, if modifications are made, these modifications may significantly influence validation parameters that have been evaluated previously, and you should start the validation from the beginning. If precision is acceptable, we can move on to trueness. We suggest evaluating trueness as process efficiency in the beginning. And if the, precision, if the process efficiency is not acceptable, then to evaluate recovery and matrix effect separately. And then depending on either the recovery or matrix effect being inacceptable, make to make modifications to your method. For example, if recovery is inacceptable, then you should try to improve your sample preparation. But if matrix effect is inacceptable, then you should either try to make modifications to the chromatography sample preparation or maybe try to dilute your samples. If, reco if uh, recovery and matrix effect are okay, then we can move on from trueness to limit of detection and limit of quantitation. If limit of detection uh, or limit of quantitation are not acceptable, then you should try to modify the sensitivity of your method. This again means to adjust the ionization parameters, mobile phase co components, 
or trying to adjust the gradient speed, for example. If you make these modifications to your method, then these influence also previous validation parameters and you should begin from the uh, stability again to evaluate, to carry out the validation. However, if LOD and LOQ are acceptable, we can move on to the last parameter of validation, the robustness. If robustness is not acceptable, you should try to find out which parameter causes this inacceptability of your method and try to make modifications for this parameter. And if you have made modifications to your method, then again you need to start the validation from the beginning. If you have have found also acceptable robustness, then you should uh, conduct a validation report. This means that you should write down what experiments did you carry out, what results you obtained, what statistical test did you, tests did you do, and what could you conclude from these results. However, validation does not stop here. For the parameters that are most critical to your method, you should uh, you should continue monitoring these parameters also during the routine use of your method.